the name of this class is The Elements in Building the Kingdom. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this particular subject is because uh, building the kingdom involves us taking the information that's in the Bible and making the Bible real to our people that are still out there looking for an answer to the ugliness that they see. And those of us that have the Bible, that, that have an understanding of the Bible, it is our job to reach them, to, organ, to organize the people, to organize you young brothers and the sisters. You follow me? Because this is a nation. This, ain't a, this is not a nation that is just about men. This is about men, women, and children. Okay? And the, the camp leaders and the brothers that have ranked 50, officers 50, 20, and so forth, this is uh, a message also to you as well in terms of uh, being mindful of those new spirits that are coming in. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to uh, outline a level of understanding of the things that are required in building the kingdom. That's what we want to talk about today. Okay? And th these particular uh, elements are necessary and that's it and being that they're necessary that means we must do it we must do it in order for us to take this truth to the next level this is something that we must do so let me just roughly ask the uh the seem the more senior men what are the elements in building the kingdom what would, what would you consider would be the elements in building the kingdom? I'm going to note these uh, things now. Anybody? I want, I want the, the camp brothers and sisters, I mean the camp brothers that are in congregations that teach on the street. That's what I want. I want to talk to you. Name some of the, uh, name some of the elements that are needed in building the kingdom. Put the microphones in their hands. Let's see. Stand up. Name uh, name an element that... Go ahead. Soldier Hezekiah, Chicago. So Discipline. 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 Okay. I have that one down, so that's good. Uh, tell me why... Name something else. All right, you said discipline, right? Give me another brother. That's good. Give me another, give me another brother. What would you add to that? Soldier Joe, Chicago camp uh, works. Works? What do you mean by works? Uh, the scripture says, you know, I mean, works to be saved. I mean, hmm? the action, I mean, the question of truth, getting out there, boots on the ground, media, push oh. the truth. Okay, the truth. So, could I sum that up with the word truth? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, meaning the application of God's laws. You agree with me? Yes, sir. Somebody else. What else? Is, one brother said discipline. Another, The other brother said uh, truth. What else do you need in obtaining the kingdom? Integrity. Say that? Integrity. Integrity. Honest. There's integrity meaning uh, being pure at heart in terms of what you do. Um, integrity falls, can be categorized in discipline. That's a level of honesty. Somebody else? Um, the, the, the willingness to change your mind. Repentance. The willingness to change your mind. Repentance. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, all right, now here's what I'm going to do. Explain how discipline can be... An, explain how discipline is an element that can bring forth the kingdom. Who's going to... Give me an example of how discipline... And the reason why I'm, I'm pointing it this way because we as teachers, we as leaders... Our job is to be able to point to our brothers, you know, and also our sisters about discipline. How will we be able to explain the benefits of discipline in terms of uh, obtaining the kingdom? Um, when we go out on the streets, that's something our community lacks as a whole. Mm -hmm. Twelve tribes of Israel, we missing, we lack discipline, we lack structure, we lack order. So when we come out there... Boots on the ground, all in one mind, one body, 
We all got purple and gold on. We sing in our cadences. We march. Um, we all speak the same language. That's the discipline our people need in order to change. Okay. In order to see that change. Right. Why is discipline required? Uh, because without discipline, we won't have any structure and order, according to uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. Must have all things done decently and in order. Okay. I want to go a little deeper. What? And somebody else can answer this. What is discipline? What is good? We're going to get to the scriptures in a minute. I just like to open it up with an uh, open forum with uh, some of these uh, things here. What is discipline? Explain how discipline works. That's what I'm asking. Um, discipline puts a stop to all of those fleshly urges that you have. It, it, it forces you to act in the way that the law states. That's, you heard what he said? Discipline puts a break. I, I, always, I always like to say, discipline is the, it puts the brakes on impulse. Y'all all right? Whenever you're, if, like, um, I'm trying to find an easy way to explain this. In schools, how many of you are in school, college? How many, okay, well, well when you're in college or if you've been to school, period, you have what is called a curriculum, right? Y'all all right? Your curriculum, in other words, is also called a discipline. You're, you're following me? Or a field of study. Let me just say it that way. A field of study is also called discipline. So we talked about discipline. The, 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 um, the application of discipline helps us to uh, stay focused in our particular doctrine. Causes us to stay focused on the, on the mission. Everybody's with me? Uh, truth. The thing that somebody mentioned about the law. The reason why the law is needed in terms of obtaining the kingdom because the law, or well, like the brother said, truth. It is the knowledge between right and wrong, right? If we are the, the benefits of right, the benefits of right from wrong. Yeah, hold it. The benefits of knowing the difference between right and wrong is what? If you're trying to obtain the kingdom. The benefits of knowing the difference between right and wrong is going to help us work collectively in terms of keeping God's laws. Therefore, we are we will be blessed. If we if we don't know the difference between right and wrong, which is what the law does, the law teaches us, like it says and what about Paul, I, I would have not known uh, sin about covetous. So how'd it go? Right, exactly. So the law has to come into the law has to come into place for you to know what is right and what is wrong. Everybody's with me so far. Uh, and the other thing was, and the brother said, construction or what did he say? Um, there was another statement that somebody said. What was the other one that someone said? What was it? A repentance. Absolutely. Knowing the knowing in repentance, you have to acknowledge what we have done wrong. As leaders, we have to know the benefits of why the law is important. As leaders, we have to know the benefit of why truth is important. We also have to know the benefit and why discipline is important. If we don't know the uh, benefits of these and others that I have written here, like vision, we have to understand the importance of vision. We have to and understand the importance of prayer. If we don't know the benefits and the importance of these things, how can we effectively teach them? Y'all all right? And if we cannot, and if we don't have the proper grasp in terms of understanding the benefits of these things, therefore we will not be able to properly instruct the young brothers, like I asked about the brothers in the back. We will not be able to properly instruct them in the same path of what we're supposed to know. Everybody's with me so far. All right. Now, um, we have here, we, uh, this school was set up, Officer Seth and Officer La Laga. Uh, okay, La Laga Waba, right? La Laga Waba. I got to get that right. Uh, these brothers have to have set up some kind of order to cause the body to fortify, to 
have this thing done. This didn't just pop out of thin air. This the school here. Everybody's with me. This right here was a was an effort that involved organization and structure and understanding. Okay, so I say that because what you see here is is just one step in terms of taking the whole planet Earth. If we can do this, what is it that we cannot do? Y'all understand what I'm saying? If we can, if we were able to do this, because you've had a lot of camps that are struggling and has been in places many years before we've gotten there and wasn't able to make a move at all. And as a matter of fact, when we've come to do it, others will say, oh, you must have sold out. You must have received a handout from this one, hand, uh, received a handout from that one. And the reason why that statement is made is because they themselves have self-doubt in terms of being able to organize among themselves. This didn't take a whole lot of uh, miracles to do. Y'all all right? Yeah. All this takes is just some simple uh, organization of funds, a little bit of arithmetic. You follow me? And boom, it could be done. And, it, and, and that's how it gets done. Y'all all right? Yeah. Now, if we're able to do that, we can, what's stopping us from taking the whole planet? If that could be done, what's stopping us from taking the whole planet? Our own thinking. Our own mind. Y'all all right? Now, uh, many years ago, I had a discussion with someone that I worked with. It's an Edomite. And racist as hell. I used to have somewhat deep conversations with these kinds of people. As crazy as that may sound, right? But uh, it seems like what you might call the hardliners or the, uh, what do they call them? The radicals. <laughs> seem to make the better sense because they were always on the fringe of society, if you will. The majority of people, use the, 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 the majority populace usually think the same. You follow me? Usually, television type of type of people. You can't really have no intelligent conversation with them. You follow me? You usually can get more accomplished when you deal with the people that deal somewhat on the edge, because what they call radical thinking. Okay, what they call radical. Just look at the term radical itself. Radical from the word radius. Y'all all right? Which means on the outside. Or radius means stems from the center on out. Everybody's all right with me so far. But just look around you. See in here, where do you think this stuff came from? I'm talking about, I'm talking about the materials. Everything that you see, these, these monitors, the walls, the pennants that are hanging up, this desk, everything. Okay? I'm talking about actual objects. Where do these things come from? Dirt. Dirt. From the ground, right? Were they always here? Huh? I mean, were these objects always here? So that means someone had to imagine... The, they, they had to imagine these things and then think about a way to bring them forward and then look within the earth to put the minerals together to bring these things forward. And that's how they come into existence. Y'all all right? So you have to think radical to come up with that. You have to think beyond the, 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 the confines of what is considered normal. And when I say considered normal, I'm talking about in terms of how our enemies have us thinking. You follow me? Everybody's with me. I'm not losing anyone, am I? Okay. Um, this uh, this uh, acquiring of the school had to was, had to come from a thought first, and before the thought could come, you have the need has to be created. Okay. Y'all heard the term called what they said by any means necessary. Y'all heard that term before, right? In order for anything to come forward. You, the, uh, the need has to come up. And if it is necessary, then you have to bring forth the means to bring it into, for, uh, bring it into reality. Okay? Um, for us to put clothes on our back, you have to think about, well, what, what does it take to make clothes? Cotton seeds, this, these kinds of things. You have to get steel to build certain structures. You have to take wood, cut it to build lumber, to build a building. All of these things come from thought first. And the reason why I talk about this so much is because, give me that. Now look at, let me get a scripture. Uh, Luke 17, 
Is that what I want? 17 and 20? Yes, sir. Read that. This is the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, and when Christ was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, that's what the question was, when is the kingdom of God coming? What are the elements that are needed in building the kingdom? Go ahead. He answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. What Christ is saying there is that, of course, many of us that have been in this truth for a while, we know that he's talking about that it's not going to just drop down on you. Okay, go ahead. It's not coming not with observation, meaning don't be looking for it to come to you. Go ahead. Neither shall they say, lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, meaning in your mind. Okay? The same way that, is there a kingdom out here now? Where did it come from? Someone had to, right, it had to be a part of somebody's mind first. The, the so-called white man, the Edomites, they were not always ruling this earth. Can I get a witness? That's right. Okay? They were not always ruling. So how is it they came to rulership? Because there was a time period where they were underneath a, 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 a people that ruled over them. So before they can get into power to rule over who was ruling over them, they had to first imagine. They had to first imagine their own rulership. And once they began to imagine their own rulership and get it, locked into their mind that this is what they wanted to do. Then they had to communicate with others to make sure that everybody else is thinking along with him. Y'all all right? Yes, and as that thought grew, as that organization grew, as that unity grew, then they found a way to just overthrow the, uh, the kingdom that was there. you follow me. And the Most High is talking about overthrow in this one. Give me Daniel 7, 18. Daniel 7, 18. This is what our uh, brothers have to say. I'm going to also read Ezekiel chapter 3 for a second. Daniel chapter 7, 18. Uh, read. This is the book of Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. That's overthrow. Do you all agree? Yes. Read it again. But the saints of the Most High shall take the the kingdom. So that means the kingdom is already here. But the problem is somebody else has it. Let's find out what the kingdom is. Give me the bottom of that chapter. Uh, 27 and 28. Daniel chapter 7 verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. What's underneath the whole heaven? Huh? The planet Earth. That's the kingdom. The kingdom is the planet Earth being controlled with God's laws, so everybody can understand. Okay, like the Lord's Prayer says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Meaning that the Lord's the Lord's commandments is going to be practiced and enforced on this earth, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. That's going to happen here. Y'all all right? Read that again. So it actually begins with you. It begins with us. Y'all all right? Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Read. Read it again. Daniel chapter 7, verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. That's the kingdom of heaven. Is this kingdom ever going to end? No. Because once we get it, we ain't never letting it go. And we're going to put the Lord's commandments in force everywhere, every day, to eternity. He never gone down. Everybody's all right with that? Right, so go back to uh, verse 18. Verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. That's the kingdom of heaven. So this goes back into what we were reading in Luke. Go back to Luke. See, the, the reason why I'm doing this is because for the majority of our people, I'm not talking about y'all in here, but just be aware that when our people come in, they have been taught that the Bible is a fairy tale. They have, they have not really understood that the Bible is talking about real life things. You understand? And it's our job to make this Bible real to our people. Get them out of that church foolishness. Okay. Read. Verse 19. 
20? Go back to verse Yes. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. For the kingdom of God is within you. Uh, so the, the kingdom of God is within our minds. So the same, like, that, like I was pointing, I'm going to put it together for you. The same way that we came together and acquired this, you follow me? We were able to organize the, uh, the resources that we had to pull us off. Then again, what is, what is the stopping of us taking it from there to the kingdom? When you really think about it, it's attainable. Now the question is, how do we do it? Okay? And the way that we do it is we do it through truth, we do it through prayer, we do it through vision, construction of order and organization, and we also do it through discipline, being disciplined in determination and the repetition of doctrine. The repetition of the most honest doctrine. So, when it comes to, now, as we, as teachers, we have this understanding. And our young brothers are coming in looking for answers. A lot of, when our people come through these doors, men and women, they're coming in because they, are, they have been out there and they have not found anything that really quenched their spiritual thirst. Everybody's with me. Nobody's coming through these doors just because they don't have anything to do. Nobody goes anywhere without a purpose. Everybody's, everybody's all right with me. Whenever, any, whenever anybody goes anywhere, there's a reason for why they're going. The question is, we have to discern what their reason is. A lot of people are going to come through these doors because they're genuinely looking for the truth. Some, of these, some people are going to come in here because they're looking for an opportunity to exploit. Some people are going to come in here because they're looking to destroy some of you brothers and looking to destroy some of you sisters. Everybody's all right? So it is our job, like a word that I used before, as the vanguards of God's truth to discern who, who is fit, who is serious about bringing forth the elements to bring forth our kingdom. Y'all all right? These are things that, are, that have to be on the mind of a watchman. Give me that. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 3. Talk to you camp leaders now. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse... Uh, 17, I think it is. Yes, sir. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Okay, explain that verse to me. Now, I mean, we go over this a lot, so I know you all know it, but let me hear. Let me hear how you would, ex how would you interpret this in terms of what we're talking about. <laughs> Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. We have the young brothers coming in. Sisters coming in. So our job as watchmen is to give our people warning, to instruct them. Okay? Not to, not to just allow people to sit. Because like I said, when people come through these doors, they're coming in for a reason. And me, I just use myself as an example. I've had many, not so many, but I've had a few glasses of water, if you will, before I came into the truth. Looking for the answer. Looking for the proper drink that would have quenched my thirst for what I was looking for, but yet didn't know it. So I went into Is uh, Islam for a minute. That didn't quench my thirst. Although it was wet, it didn't quench my thirst. I went to uh, Africanism. It was wet, sounded good, but it still didn't quench my thirst. You follow me? So I was out of that. Then I came into Israel, and it answered all the questions. So then I knew this is the glass of water that quenched my thirst. And I say that because a lot of people are, diff are thirsty for different things. Some people are thirst, like the scripture speaks about, hunger and thirst for righteousness. Give me that scripture since I quoted it. Anybody know what that is? Hunger and thirst for righteousness. 
Let's read that since I've quoted it. But this is where our minds are supposed to be. This is what we have to discern to look for. Everyone that comes through these doors, we are looking for those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. If someone is looking, uh, if someone is hungry and thirsty, and thirsty uh, to make a record deal or, or try to exploit the congregation in some way, they're thirsting for something else. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse <laughs> blessed is he, right? Right. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. For they shall be filled, meaning filled with this word. They shall be filled with getting the kingdom. That's what it's talking about. So, some of us are thirsty for different things. And it's our job to discern Who's thirsty for what? That's the reason why you brothers in these in the position where you have younger people coming in, it is our job to make sure that they're thirsty for the right thing. Some people don't know what they're thirsty for, so I'm not saying to give them the boot. But you you have to instruct them to know what to be thirsty for. And if it's not within them to be thirsty for that, then they will leave. Trials, it's trials themselves will push them out. Y'all alright? That's the reason why the most guy has that. He'll have trials set up. Trials meaning the laws. We're going to talk about that. The, the discipline will walk with you by crooked ways. Okay? Which is to try you. To see if you are about keeping these commandments. If you're not, then you'll be back out. That's how the one third is going to be sifted from among all the sickness that's out here. All of our people are not going to be saved. Y'all understand that? Yes, Only one third are going to come through this thing. And the rest of our people are going to die. Okay, we already have that understanding. So our job is to teach this word to bring in that one third. This is talking about men and women. Y'all all right? Okay. Um, so, truth, prayer. I want to talk about that a little bit. When our people come in, they don't really know who they are. They're thirsty and they're looking for an answer. Um, what the deacon is saying is heavy because I want you men to understand something. Remember we just went to uh, Luke 17 and 20. It talks about uh, the kingdom not coming with observation. You men must understand something. Deuteronomy, I'll just say the 28th chapter, makes you men the direct descendants um, and inheritors of uh, the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. One day we was at camp and uh, uh, Africanism or and an Egyptologist came and said, I'm a king. I said, well, where's your kingdom? All right. Because you must understand something. What you men being the future inheritors of the kingdom, the kings and priests. That's why he said in Revelation, I have made you kings and priests on the earth. So a king, what are you going to rule your kingdom with? Your, your kingdom is going to be ruled with the blueprints of the Most High God. And to show that you're a king, the king must stand for what he believes in. And stand what he's going to judge people on. And that's the commandments of the Lord. So a king can't be a hypocrite. So we here practicing, these, rehearsing these righteous acts. Making sure that we inherit the kingdom that we're going to enforce the commandments with. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 43 and 44. Again, this reflects back to what I was talking about. Understanding the benefits of truth. Understanding the benefits. Us, us as leaders now. Us as leaders, we have to be able to articulate the benefits of truth. Be able to articulate the uh, benefits of prayer. Be able to articulate the, uh, the benefits of having vision. Imagination to create. Y'all all right? We have to be able to articulate structure and order and organization. We also have to be able to articulate or to make plain discipline and being determined to set up the kingdom. Y'all are right. Everybody's with me. So, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43 and 44. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. And shall come, and thou shall come down very low. Now we as teachers, we're on the street. How many of y'all teach on the street? Just stick your hands up. 
That's a lot of teachers, right? Whenever we read this on the street and our people are there, are we able to articulate the process of how this happened? Can I get a yes? Anybody? But my brother said no. I'm listening. I'm listening. Uh, Officer Where did I... Right. Just, just right. Officer Gabar, uh, I was thinking from the teacher standpoint, we can, but our people can. Right. Our, our people can. Right. They don't know. But what is now? If our people cannot, what is it? Our what is our job to do? Is to make it plain. Uh, Nehemiah eight and eight. Give the right. sense. Exactly. So we make. How do we? Uh, how do we make it plain to explain how the stranger that was within that was? Because this is Moses talking to Israel, right? And the same strangers that came out of Egypt with us, Moses pointed to them and he said, "These same strangers here." When you break God's laws, they're going to be over you. That's what he was saying. Can you imagine that? You ever think about that? Here we coming out of Egypt. The Most High sent all of these plagues to destroy our enemies, to get us out of there. And the stipulation was, well, if you break God's laws, these same people that came out with you, God is going to put them over you. Read 43 and 44. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. The stranger that is that is around you, that came running out of Egypt behind us, shall get what? Above thee very high. Go ahead. And thou shall come down very low. And thou shall come down very low. You think we wanted to hear that? No. Read the next piece. He shall lend to thee, and thou shall not lend to him. This, these same people shall lend to you, and you will not be able to lend to them. You think, you think we believe that then? No. Because we saw that God was on our side. Go ahead. He shall be the head. He shall be the head. And thou shall be the tail. And you shall become the tail. We're looking at Moses like, you out of your mind. So the point is, what process, how did this happen? And we have to be able to explain the process of how this actually came to be. So that our people will know why they are where they are. You follow me? And if we can and if we can explain how this happened, then we can also explain how we get back to where we're supposed to get. But we have to understand the process of how it happened. Okay? We know that it was the breaking of God's commandments. Of course, we, that's the easy way of explaining it. But how did those laws how did the breaking of God's commandments actually have an effect on the nations to overtake us? Think about it. Think about some of the laws that we broke, that that paved the way for the nations to be where, this, where these two verses say they're going to be. Think about that. And that's what we have to be able to teach. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Name one of the laws that we broke. Give me... Uh, you got something for me? Let's see. Let me hear something. Idolatry. You said what? Idolatry. Idolatry? Yes, Idolatry. Okay. What you got, Gabriel? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Okay. I like that one. Brother in the back. Love not, brother, as you love myself. I like that one better. Well, all those are correct, but my brother said, love thy neighbor as, love thy brother as thyself, right? Think about the process of how when we don't do that, how we will bring about this. Because once we began to not correct, love thy neighbor as I said, what does it mean, love thy neighbor as I said? What does that mean? What does that mean? Let's get the scripture. Everybody knows about it, right? Get the scripture. Leviticus. Right. Well, you, what's, what's, get the actual one. The one that you was going to. You was going somewhere. And also get the get the other one in Leviticus. Now, y'all might be thinking, "Sir, this is this is rather a simple class." But the thing is, being able to take what is simple to us is not simple to our brothers that's coming in. And the reason why is because this has to be explained to them, so that they can see that the our actual breaking of God's laws contribute to the condition where we are now. And the reason why that's the reason why that's important is because. The reverse has to happen to get us out of this. And if we can understand how we got messed up, then we can also understand how we're going to get out of it. 
It is the absolute application of God's laws that's going to get us out of this, out of the problem. And, 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 and because we did not keep God's laws, it's what put us into the problem. You all understand? It is like what the scriptures say, this gospel shall be preached all over the world. Because when that last member is sealed up, we're out of here. You follow me? That's how we're going to get the kingdom. So we have work to do in making sure that our brothers and sisters come in and repent. You follow me? And we have to be able to take this Bible and explain it to them in easy terms where they can see clearly what's necessary. Go ahead. Soldier Saul from OKC. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Loving your brother as you love yourself is treating your brother as you want to be treated and also rebuking your brother when he needs to be rebuked. Yes. Like going into, uh, if your brother's selling drugs, you teach him not to sell drugs, not to murder, not to steal. Oh, okay. You're doing good. You're, th th you're right. You're right. So the actual love, like you read in the book of uh, John in the back, where it says, uh, for the love of God is when we keep God's commandments. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, sir. So the love of God is keeping God's commandments. And when we don't do this, when we don't rebuke, like you said, when we don't rebuke each other, when we do wrong, then that means that there's, the unity is broken. Correct. And once the unity is broken, if other nations are unified in what they're doing, like I talked about earlier, they had to unify in order to overthrow the rulers that was over them. Yes, sir. So then it makes it easy for them to overthrow us. Yes, sir. And once that happens, then we'll end up in a case where they'll lend to us and we won't lend to them. Correct. You follow me? Yes, sir. That's a, that's a way of explaining how when we don't keep the laws, it would bring about just what we read. Yes, sir. Real quick. So, with the same thought, this isn't a hard question. So, with the same thought process, what, as Deacon Yawasa would put it, what is the key element the black, the so called black, Hispanic, and Native American community is missing? My man had the first. Unity. Okay, something else. You're right, it's just. I want to keep it in the vein of what we're talking about. This is so easy right now. Matt. Yes. Oh, have a seat. In the vein. Sorry about calling you. You know how I do. My brother right here in the black shirt. <coughs> what is the key element the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American community is missing? Salam, y'all. Uh-huh. I say, uh, I say knowledge of self and knowledge of our heritage. You <laughs> see, in the vein of what we're discussing right now, this moment, whose hand is that over in the corner? So if you block it up. Okay, now, nah, you got your hand up. Guys, laws. <laughs> yep, that's, that's. <laughs> You're dead. You want something deep that, it's not deep at all. I'm just <laughs> saying it. I'm telling them. In the vein of what we're talking about right now. Uh, we need brotherly, brotherly love for one another. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's it. But you're not saying what I want you to say. I'm going to say it. I guess it's a surprise. Surprise! It says, Love, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is the key element the so-called black Hispanic the Native American community is missing. Imagine if everybody loved themselves, loved their neighbors, they loved themselves. Would we be selling drugs to one another? No. Would we be the gang banging and all the nonsense that's going on now? Would that be happening right now? No. No. Here is with the uh, what's that that code? Uh, no snitching. Would that be plaguing our people? No. No. This is a key element, like as the niggas bring it out, that we're missing as a people. And this is what we have to bring to our people to build this kingdom. It ain't gonna come about just sitting back, just watching. And you, you just ain't, our people gotta learn this. They've been taught the exact opposite. Oh, it's all about me. I ain't worried, it ain't me. I ain't, I ain't, it ain't got nothing to do with me. Instead of, man, that's my brother across the street. Let me go help him. That's my sister needs help that's down and out. Dang, her lights is off. Now let's pull together and help her out. I wouldn't wanna be sitting in the dark. I wouldn't want my refrigerator spanking and eggs rotten and milk going bad. This is what we're missing as a people. This is a part of the element that we need to build and bring about this kingdom. Teaching our people how to love.
their neighbor as they love themselves. So everybody's all right? Yes, sir. So now that we have uh, a, a, a bit more understanding in terms of what we must do in terms of teaching our brothers and, and also teaching our sisters and our wives and our, and our children, another element is prayer. Prayer. That's very important. And we have to understand the benefits of prayer. Because the Lord listens for that thing. Y'all understand me? Um, in prayer, it is when we acknowledge our maker. Okay, we acknowledge our maker. And this is where our people are lost at. Isaiah 1 and 3. This is, this is, but when we don't understand who made us, this is the category that we fall in. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. This is what this is the category that our people that are lost fit in. And when they come in, it is our job to take this Bible and clear up that confusion. Y'all alright? Yes, Read it again. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. But Israel do not know. Who wants to take that and roll? Okay. Let, let the new brothers get it. Because I, I'm glad you said the new brothers because we should have explained to the new brothers this clearly. Let's, let's, see, if, let's see if the job is done. Yes. Brother Jacob. St. Louis County. St. Louis County. Uh, okay, Brother Jacob. Yes, sir. So we say... Uh, the ox know his owner, meaning the ox know who's in control of his life. You know, he knows who his his uh, his, his maker is, basically. And um, as also, you know, they they know who control their life. But Israel, you know how. Uh, what, about, what, what, what about the ass? The yeah, ass, <laughs> the ass knows where he belongs. So yeah. I'm about to get you know. No, he knows he's know where, where his uh, his home is. Okay. But Israel. Does not know. They don't consider like a lot of people. Before they, we get to the consider, what do you mean that Israel don't know? What that part mean? They uh, they they don't they don't know. They don't know what? They don't know who uh who their God is. They don't know who they are. Okay. And what's the other thing that they Israel don't know? They don't know that they're the Israelites. Okay. Uh, go do it again. I want to hear you say the words. Explaining that they don't know. It says, the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib. But Israel do not know. Explain that part. But Israel do not know. What is it that Israel don't know? Tell it to be plain. So that way I know you know it. They don't know where they belong. They don't know who they are. They don't know who their maker is. Okay. That, okay. They don't know who their maker is. What about the ass? What about that part? They don't know their home. They don't know where their land is at, yeah. right? Okay. So we're doing good. Yeah. Hey, read that one more time. Because uh, there's more in there. Right. That's the reason why I'm saying this. Go ahead. Go ahead, deal. Go read it. It says, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. Let's, like the uh, deacon said, let's make it plain and simple. The animals know where they get their food from, don't they? Whenever it's time, they might wander all the way out in the field. They may be, you know, down the block somewhere. He knows where the food source is at. So he can find his way back and he knows where to come to eat, right? Same thing with the donkey. Now we kept saying donkey was getting off. The donkey knows. He might, in all his stupidity, he walking around, he ain't doing what you're doing. He ain't got to calculate numbers and make wheels and swords and things. But that, that donkey knows where to go when it's time to eat. He knows who takes care of him, right? But for some reason, Israel don't know. Let me read something real quick. Because we tend to forget this. This is uh, Matthew 6. I'm not going to leave if they know what you're talking about either, sir. I'm going to no, right. stay right there where you at. Don't worry, I got this. Matthews chapter 6. Read verse 26. The book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Come on. Are ye not much better than they? Are you not much better than they? That's the question. 
Are you not much better than they? You know? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Read. And why take ye thought for a raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Come on. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Read. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, if God takes care of the grass of the field, read, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, it's here today, gone tomorrow. Here it is. You, you, you'll pick the, the grass of the wheat for, for food and things of that nature. It gets cut, it gets thrown away, trampled on, read. Shall he not much more clothe you? Read. Oh, ye of the little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. You see, why is it that we tend to forget? Israel always forgets for some reason about the one who's in control. We forget. We're so quick. I'm going to tell you, a lot of us have all types of testimonies. Brother asked me and Kevin one time, what's your testimony? <laughs> Little do you know. But how quick do we forget whenever we live in this life, we're doing what we do, and then we follow those hard times. And it's like we forgot the most high worked a miracle not even a year ago, six months ago. Some of us came in here beating cases. Some of us came in here trying to find work, couldn't find no work, got blessed by the most high. Now we stressing and tripping, trying to figure out how we're going to see our way. This is something I'm dealt with. At the end of the day, Israel got to know the Most High God is the one that clothes them. Most High God is one that feeds and <laughs> takes care of us, right? All praises for that. Okay, moving on. In uh, that Isaiah 1 and 3, read it one more time, my brother. Isaiah I'm chapter 1 and 3, just going to move on. Okay. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel do not know. My the, Israelites, the Israelites do not know, like what like what my brother said. Go ahead. My people do it not consider. And also, my people don't even consider. They don't even consider that they don't know what an ox and an ass knows. So read it again. Read the top part of it. Now I'm gonna explain what I'm talking about. The ox was saying it. earlier. Go ahead. The ox knoweth his owner. When it says the ox knoweth his owner, the ox knows where his power is. We as black folk, we don't know, as black people, we don't know that our connection to God is where our power is. That's what we don't know as a people. We don't realize that. We look everywhere else except where our, except for our maker. If we were to connect with our maker and realize that he is our maker, our objective would be to connect with him. Okay? Our people don't know that they are the Israelites, like you said, but knowing that you're an Israelite entails a connection with him in terms of knowing where to go for strength. We don't do that. We're in the churches, but we're not connected to God. We attach ourselves to many things as a people, but we don't do what the Bible says in terms of what's required of us. Give me that Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy uh, 10 and 12, I think it is. Yes, sir. This is what Isaiah was talking about, Isaiah 1 and 3. This, the ox knoweth his own. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God? We don't know what's required. As a people, we don't know what is absolutely necessary. In order for us to obtain the kingdom, we must know what's necessary. We must know what's required of us. If we don't keep the commandments of God, these nations will continue to lend to us and we will not lend to them. Y'all all right? Yes, Go ahead. To walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command to thee this day for thy good. For our good. That's what these laws are for. For our good. For our good. Go ahead. Behold the heaven and heavens of heavens is the Lord thy God. Earth also with all that there is in. What verse are you in? 14. Continue. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them. Even you above all people as it is today. 
Knowing know, know who your maker is entails all of this. Go ahead. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. This is the verse that I wanted to get to because in our, uh, in our realizing that we are required to keep these commandments. Read verse 16 again. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. When it says circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, what does that mean? Who? I want the new brother. I want, I want somebody in the back. I want to see if they understand this. What does that mean? Someone who's new? I want one of the newest brothers that's been here. I, got, I think someone been here like six months. Probably a little beyond six months. What does that mean? Give it to, give it to him. leadership it refers to the renewing of your mind it refers to what the renewing of your mind it refers to the renewing of our minds absolutely uh now where's the scripture that speaks about it's in romans 2 about circum yeah circumcision romans chapter 2 verse 25 for circumcision verily profited if thou keep the law but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Who is the same brother in the back? What does that mean? The same brother that answered the right. The same brother that answered the one before. What does this mean here that we just read? I'm sorry, sir. Could you repeat that one more time? Read it again. So the scripture says, uh, the first scripture that we read in Deuteronomy uh, 12 and 16, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, you got that right, yes, sir. and be no more stiff-necked. So you, you're right on that. Yes, sir. So now we're reading Romans now. Read Romans. He said, for the circumcision verily property, if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Uh, it means that if you're not following the commandments, where, even if you are circumcised, it doesn't profit. <laughs> exactly. So, does that mean that we are not to be circumcised? No, sir. Does it mean that circumcision is not important in terms of the physical circumcision? It still means that circumcision is still important. Yes, exactly. But if you are circumcised in the flesh, which is what is important, but you are not according to read this again, the one that you just read, for circumcision very property. If thou keep the law. First Peter chapter three verse four. Yes. Read. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Do you see this is right here is going to correlate what we read about circumcision of the mind. Everybody's with me. Y'all are not with me. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Um, read the verse above that. That's what I needed. Verse 3. Verse 3. Whose adorning, let it not be an outward adorning, or plaiting of, in the, of the hair, or wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel. Is there, is there something wrong with our sisters dressing like this? Not at all. Go ahead. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. But more importantly, the, the the, the most, the important part about the nice dressing and everything else that we read in the third verse, verse four is more important than three. Go ahead. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. The hidden man is Christ and the commandments. Go ahead. And which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in sight of God of great Christ. So the great price here is her, her mind reflecting Christ. Just like the great price in terms of us as men would be the, the circumcision in the mind. Although the physical circumcision is required just the way you would want your sister to look nice and dress nice. But what's more important in both cases is that our minds are in tune. Y'all right? Y'all all right? Yes, sir. This is, these are the things that we have to make clear to our people as they come through these doors. All right. Uh, let's see what I have. 
I was going to move on to, uh, unless y'all want to say something real quick while I look for my next piece. I got, I got a preset for you. Go ahead. Uh, Joel chapter 2. You got it? Read that. 13. Because uh, it's very important, uh, like the deacon brought out in uh, Luke 17 earlier, it's all ties in together. Uh, We're going to get the kingdom if our minds are right. All right? Uh, the experiment called the Negro will not inherit the kingdom. <laughs> All right. He wasn't made to get the kingdom. The Israelite man and the woman was. Okay, read it. Joel chapter 2 verse 13. And rend your hearts and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of a kind of a great kindness and repented him of the evil. You see that? So it's letting you know we get our minds right. The Lord will turn back the evil and put Deut the curses of Deuteronomy 28 on our enemies. Exactly. Exactly. So, now we're going to move on to vision. Vision and having the imagination to create. This is, this is, the, this is having the ability to foresee something. Just like I talked about taking the elements that are out here and organizing them to bring forth the things that we need. And a, and a perfect example is the materialization of the school. Not the building so much, because the building was always here. But it took organizational effort to bring minds together, to plan, to say we're going to do this with X amount of money, we're going to do this to get these supplies, we're going to get do this to get this. And that's how this building became to be. Y'all all right? The same thing could be done to take the whole planet Earth. That's what I want y'all to see, okay? So vision and the ability to create and imagination. Have an imagination and imagery. Um, the term imagination, tell me about imagination. Imagination. Imagination is about having an image. What is an image to you? Think about what an image, what does an image represent? And the reason why I say that is because of, give me uh, 348. From Smackabees. I'm going to show you the importance of imagery. Going back to what the nations have did. Now this was during the time of the Greeks. First Maccabees chapter 3 verse 48. And laid open the book of the law. This is what the Greeks did. The Greeks, the Greeks laid open the books of, laid open our books, our Bible. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. Why did they do this? Why did they do this? Think about the process of what it took. Okay, get that microphone in their hands. Why did they take the opportunity? Why did they do this? I see a brother got his hand up in the back there. The question is, read it again, you're done? First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. And laid open the book of the law. This is what the Greeks did, okay? The Greeks laid open the books of the law, meaning our records, our Bible. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness. Wherein the heathens, the nations, have sought, meaning they looked, meaning it was on their mind. To do what? To paint the likeness of their images. Why did they do that? Shalom, how are you, brother? Brother Maccabees from St. Louis? Yes, okay. Push it all the way up. Is it on? Leave it on. <coughs> Shalom. Shalom. Yes. Shalom. Um, they did that to set themselves up as God. Okay, they did that to set themselves up as God. This was done during the time of the Greeks, right? 333 B.C., going way back then. So you, you, you look like you want to say something? You had to hand up? Yeah. All right. Uh, but I didn't finish with him yet. Give me back to him. I'm going to come to you. I want some more. So, now say what you said again. They did that to like, set themselves up. As they did, the Greeks did that to set themselves up. Explain how. Like, through, through that image, you know, portrayed them as a, as a superior people. Instead of um, us, black, blacks and Hispanics. Well, before we get to us, tell me more about them. Like, to portray them as superior people, go ahead. Portray them as, as superior people and put it out there that they're um, the holy people of the Bible. 
Okay, is there more? Okay, bring it forward. Then I'm going to get to Lagoa. Shalom, leadership. Shalom, how are you? Uh, doing good. I'm Sergeant Daniela from uh, OKC. Okay, all praise to the most high. Um, at that time, uh, when the Grecians took over, they they in, they enforce uh, democracy, so they didn't want to get rid of the laws that we had. They was wanted to put their their mix their spin on um, the Bible, on our laws. So with that, they didn't take they didn't they didn't do away with our laws, but they painted their faces. They made it seem like that they were the chosen people. So they, they took our history. That's what you're saying, right? Okay, I understand that. You still don't tell me why did they do it? Why did they do it? They did it because once. Once um, once we got the chance to, to read and, and go over the over the laws again, we would see it as that they were uh, like we were, they were going to continue to make us lost. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's look. I'm gonna I'm gonna hear what I want to hear. Y'all not y'all not wrong, but I, this is something I'm looking for. Come on, I was alive in Kansas City. Um, they did that. They set up that imagery to give themselves confidence to overthrow that's it you heard that? that that's the answer they had to they, that's what imagery and imagination is about they had to imagine the effects of putting images putting their images in our records like you were saying take our history they put themselves now they themselves they know that they're not the people but as years go by their children and their, and their successors are going to look at it, and when they see that they're, they're going to see themselves in our history, what is it going to do for them? They will become confident and think that they are us. They will think that they are these people. And if you have that confidence in you, what's going to stop you? Once you have the confidence that you're the king of this, that you're the runners of this, you will act accordingly as a man thinketh. You'll understand that. That's what he did. That's why he did it. He said, that's the reason why they make these movies about superheroes. A lot of us laugh about that kind of stuff. But they do that stuff to inspire them to do more than what they're doing now. That's why they got these superheroes and all that stuff and comics and all that. They do that to inspire themselves to be beyond where they are. You follow me? Everybody's with me. That's why they did it. So the power of imagination goes into the power of um, you, you, imagination and imagery. Is what gives us, like my brother said, the confidence to do things. Okay? So that's the reason why it is important for us to establish imagery among us. That's the reason why we want to educate our children. This is the reason why we want our people to see the results of this work. That's the reason why, like Deacon IBO, with the, uh, the movement of the real estate. You follow me? Do you know what I'm talking about when I say that? Okay, so there's a lot of things that we're trying to do that we are doing in IUIC, not only because it's not not only because we need it, but our people need to see so that they can have the confidence. You know what? If these brothers can do it and if these sisters can do it, I can do it. You follow me? Yes, that's what the people need to see. That's when the people come in. They need to see this. They need to see that because that's what they're looking for. When they see us in uniform, when they see us in in order, in the way you look. They said, there's some structure here. There's some organization here. Let me go in there. Then when they come in here, they need to see what this unity is actually doing. And then that will give them the confidence to join in. Y'all follow me? Yes, sir. Everybody's with me so far? Yes, sir. Okay, all praises. Um, vision to... Envision and the imagination to create the means to bring about the necessity, the necessary change. That's what we, the purpose of uh, vision, to envision, to envision means to conjure it up in your mind, the imagination. Because that imagery will put something back into you that they fear. One thing I thought one of y'all was going to bring up as far as why they did it was that this is part of them destroying us. You stated being lost. Well, the point is, is to get Israel to sin so that what? So that they know, they knew that if they, if they sin against their God, 
what is that in Judge? Judah 5. Judah 5. If they sin against their God, we can come against them. But if their God be with them, we're going to be made a laughing stock like the Egyptians did. That's the history. The other nations knew. Esau, he took it to the heart. He understood it completely. That's why everything that he does is about imagery. So us coming back now is us taking that back and instilling that into our children, into ourselves, so that we can now build and grow. All of what I was trying to make sense of is going into Jeremiah 4, 22. Let's read that. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 22. Now let me set it up this way. When I talked about vision, we understand what vision is. Vision is to imagine something that's not yet seen, like faith in Hebrews 11. And this, this envision or this imagination, we imagine uh, these things so that, that it will help us to create the means to bring about the necessary change that we need, right? Read Jeremiah 4.22. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. The Israelites. This goes back into what we're talking about the ox and the ass. Read it again. For my people is foolish. For my people Israel is foolish. They have not known me. They have not known me. Go ahead. They are sottish children. They are evil and wicked as hell. Go ahead. And they, sottish means stupid. <laughs> Go ahead. And they. Am I right? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. And they have none understanding. And our people have none understanding because the right teachers have not gotten to our people to teach them. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. They are wise to do evil. Our people are what? Wise to do evil. Our people are wise to do evil. Listen. But to do good, they have no knowledge. But to do good, our people have no knowledge knowledge. So, think about how our people are wise to do evil. Think about some of the evil that our people do and, and point out the wisdom that they bring to fortify that evil. Go ahead. All praises to the leadership. All praises to the leadership. Uh, new members, just the second week here. How, how many? You, what, new weekend? Second right. weekend. Second Second weekend. All praise to the most high. Yes. All right. Um, believe what you were talking about. Uh, uh, the easy to do wicked. Uh, like a person I'm selling gonna... drugs. Okay. And they want... Person selling drugs, right? That is evil, correct? Yes, sir. They are wise to do evil. Yes. Tackle that. And wise to do evil. What that mean? They mean they try to justify? Mm -mm. Okay. Not, they're not about justifying. Why is it believe? Let, let me get another brother. Hold on. I know you, you, you good, but I want you to hear some hear, hear some of these answers. It's what like, you got for me? It's like Deacon. It's like when uh, like the drug dealers, they can tell you how to break down everything. You they can tell you how to whip it up and what to add to it to blow it. They, they can tell you everything about it. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> math teachers, you know what I'm saying? Right. You, you heard what he said? Now, I'm going to explain exactly what he just embarked on. Here you have a brother that failed chemistry in school. Dropped out. Dropped out. But he became a supreme chemist when it came to making crack. You all all right? That's wise to do evil. Somebody said, how the heck? Because I saw a, a crack documentary. I don't know why. I, I mean, you know how they have these programs. TLC and the rest of these different programs that come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? And they do these uh, exposés and... So I was watching and they actually showed how the man made crack. And you talk about you put it in a glass pot? Put ice in it? Where the hell did he learn all of that? I'm talking about from straight up cocaine. He did it, cooked it up. And then they said they call it crack and they have to hear crack, crack, crack. They would pop. My point is, my point is, when it came to doing that, like my brother said, they found all kinds of ways to get it done. You follow what I'm saying? Learn the market, who to sell it to, how to break it down, pour ice cubes in it, cut it up, got the scale, all that business. <coughs> you realize this? That's wise to do evil. 
Read the rest of the scripture. Watch this. They are wise to do evil. Our people are wise to do evil. But to do good, they have no knowledge. But to do good, our people seem like they're stupid when it comes to doing good. Look at a situation where the best of our people, the best, I'm talking about the ones with the, with the PhDs, the doctorates, professors. Here you have a populace of black people. I just use black Judah alone. A trillion dollars in outside spending every year. Y'all all right? How is it that some of these brilliant people cannot figure out a good way to take this money and do something for our people? But to do good, they have no knowledge. How come these same brains can't do something to, to alleviate the, the drug problem? To alleviate the self-hatred? To alleviate the mistreatment and abuse of husbands and wives? Children neglect all kinds of evil that's going through our society. These great minds can't figure out anything to stop that. Y'all all right? Y'all follow me? Yes, sir. But when it comes to doing evil, we find the perfect way to get it done. Y'all gonna get that nigga. I'm gonna wait for him. Nigga owe me some money. Well, how much money owe you? Five dollars. <laughs> Kill that nigga, man. Huh? Wait for him. Yo, he get off work around this time. I clocked the schedule. Y'all know what it, you know? He goes over here. He visits his baby moms this way. But have all that. Do you want to rob your house? Clock your schedule. He goes to work at this time. His daughter goes to work. His daughter goes to school. Such as me. Plotting. Have all that done. Next thing you know, you robbed. But when it comes to doing good, nothing comes up. <laughs> Y'all follow me? All this got to change. All this has to change. Abiel, you were going to say something? Yeah, go ahead. You know how to put the people together to do it. Yo, you meet me over here, Black. Yo, Jay, you meet me at Coach Street. Yo, Black, uh, you meet me over here, T-Money. Yeah, he put the brothers together to do it. But to do the right thing, to come out and build your community and teach your brother, he don't know how to do that. But to go break in somebody's house, he know how to gather brothers together, know what tools he need, know what time he got to be there. It's crazy. And what Deacon Yassau was saying was heavy because when I was in the streets, I seen dudes breaking cars, strip cars, take the car, I mean, strip it down to the damn, the, the, the fuel pump. Then they turn around, go back and forth to jail doing this thing, but never get a job being a mechanic. They know how to strip a car, take it apart, put it back together, but they refuse to get a job as a mechanic. It's crazy. Mm. That, that goes for the, like, earlier, for those of you that can't, that brother made every excuse in the book to not keep God's commandments. Every excuse. He was coming out the woodworks with different reasons on why we can't do it. Oh, we can't because of this, because of that. But it's so simple. Just do it. You got doctors and lawyers, people who have all these prestigious jobs reading blueprints, reading them, looks like the Matrix on their computer. But they can't read, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm. Our people are wise to do evil. Right. Exactly. Uh, go to the book of Kings, chapter uh, 8. 44 to 52. This goes back to the element that I talked about with prayer. How important prayer is. Once we understand that we're the Israelites and what's required of us, then we pray. Okay? And this is the importance of prayer. And this is what it this is the benefit that it has. First Kings 8, chap, 8, chapter 8, verse 44. Read to 52. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 44. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shalt pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen. Once we understand that we are the Israelites and we understand what's required of us, along with our vision, along with, along with us understanding the importance and the benefits of keeping God's laws, once we understand the uh, the importance and the and the benefit of of um, of prayer and vision and discipline, once we understand these things, these are the things that we will do to make sure that these things happen. Read and toward the house that I have built for my name. So if we pray towards the city that the Lord had built, that He had Solomon to build, meaning the temple. Go ahead. Then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication. 
and maintain their cause. Read. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy. That's what we have. We are to the we are under our enemies. Come on. So that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Yes. Yet, if we remember that we are the Israelites, in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent. And repent. That's what the Lord wants us to do. And repent. Going back to what my brother said, we have to repent. Go ahead. And make supplication. This is what we have to teach our brothers. We the ones that have to instruct our new brothers and sisters when they come in to follow these guidelines, to follow this, so that they can make the change required to clean them up, so that they can inherit the kingdom. Go ahead. And repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them away captives, saying, We have sinned. We have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul and the land of their enemies which led them away captives and pray unto thee toward their land which thou giveth unto their fathers the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for thy name. Go ahead. Then hear thou their prayers and their supplication in heaven thy dwelling place and maintain their cause and maintain our cause go ahead and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee and all of their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee and give them compassion before them who carried them away captive that they may be comp that they may have compassion on them what verse is that verse 50 read first read 50 again and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee go ahead. and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee and give them compassion before them who carried them away captive that they may have compassion on them. What is the most I say in that verse there? What is the most I say in that verse there? Who can tell me what the most I say in that verse there? All right, my brother got his hand up in the back. commanding us to show love for our people even before our enemies. Mm. Read 50 again. It says, well, let me read it. And forgive thy people. I want you to keep the mic. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee. This is what, this is Solomon praying on behalf of Israel. And he said, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, O Lord, and all their, and all their transgressions wherein they have sinned against you, O Lord, and give them compassion before them who carry them captive, that they may have compassion on them. Who's the they that may have compassion on them? Let me bring it up front. Who in the front row knows what this is talking about? You teachers. Bring the microphone up here. What that part is talking about? When it says that they may have compassion on them. What that part's talking about? That our, our enemies may have compassion on us. Yes, that's what it said, Mom. Okay? Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Now, Jeremiah, when we keep in God's laws, this goes into what's written in Romans 13. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for that. I had a series of scriptures that I want to read on that. Um, there's a scripture in Jeremiah. Give me a second. Say something for a second. I got to look for it. Uh, so, sir, did you want me to continue to 52? Or yes. do you want to stop? Well, I'm going to stop there, but I'm going I'm to I'm come back to 52. Yes, sir. Uh, I found it. Give me Jeremiah 15 and 11. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter because I say, uh, the reason why I say this is because a lot of times what holds us back is not the nations per se. It's our own thinking. That's what I want to. I want us to get off the. I want us to get off of the blame game, and begin to dig within ourselves to overcome the opposition. Y'all follow me? Through the application of God's laws, we have to get out of this victimized mentality. Y'all all right? Everybody's with me. Read. 
Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 11. The Lord said, Verily, it shall be well with thy remnant. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and in a time of affliction. What? Did you get that? Are y'all shocked that that's in the Bible? Yeah, brother said, yes, you're shocked that that's in there? You never read that before? Yes, sir. Read it again. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 11. The Lord said, Verily it shall be well with thy remnant. Don't, don't get me wrong. The white man, Esau, is the devil. Satan is the devil. Can Satan do anything that God don't allow? No. Neither can this white man. Y'all all right? That's the confidence that we have to have. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Let me hear Verse it. 1 and verse 2. Okay. He says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty. Uh, let's read that Jeremiah again. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 11. Because the point that I'm making is that, yes, we want to be, we want to have the liberty to do the things that we need to do, and God is in control of all of that. That's what I want us to understand. Never mind Esau uh, himself, God is the one that controls the forces on what these men do. If we, are, if we please the Lord, he will cause our enemies to have compassion on us. Okay, and vice versa. When we don't deal right with the Lord, He will cause these same enemies to put hell on us. Y'all all right? Read. Jeremiah 15 Jeremiah. and 11. Then we're going back to Kings and finish that up. Verse 11. The Lord said, Verily it shall be well with thy remnant. Verily the remnant of Israel that's going to keep the commandments. The rest of our people going to catch hell eventually. Go ahead. Verily. I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil. In the time of evil, he was going to cause him to treat us well. Go ahead. And in the time of affliction. And, and in the time of affliction. Now, this is during the time of us getting built up. So the reason why I'm reading this is because a lot of the opportunities for us to do the things that we are doing is not because there's laws against it. You follow me? There is, no, there is no law that prevents us from getting this school. There is no law that prevents us from doing like what you're doing in Oklahoma. There is no law that prevents us from doing the things in terms of setting up school for our children. This is what I'm talking about. We set up the, the, the school system uh, like we have going on in New York. And I, I think it's going on across the, the whole country, of uh, the whole uh, congregation of IUIC setting up the school curriculum from grades kindergarten to the eighth from right now and we're looking to go even further than that but right now that's actually being put into place the, the, the law doesn't stop us from doing that so why is it that we have not done this prior to this time here because the law always allowed that you follow what i'm saying the reason why we didn't do it because our thinking was wrong we were wise to do evil but to do good it never came up this, to do something as simple as that, it never came up. The things that was going on in Oklahoma with the housing thing, we're trying to set that up. With the clothing, we're trying to set that up. Th there's nothing that's stopping us from doing this, but our own inferior thinking. You follow me? Y'all all right? That's what has to change. That's where repentance comes in and being born again, like the video that the bishop did, the fear of being born again. A lot of us are afraid to challenge the, to, to challenge the old self, the self that was made in America. We are afraid to challenge that. We are afraid to push the envelope of greatness. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. When the bishop started us, when he started out, I'm talking about when the very beginning stage of the value was in, when he set up the deacons. He asked, he asked us, he said, are you brothers, are y'all ready to take this truth to levels where it never, never been pushed before? And he said, you're going to face some hate. He said, but we're going to push this truth as far and as hard as we can push it. We all told him, yeah, because we knew that we knew what we were going to face. Because a lot of our people are afraid to break outside of that comfort zone. They are afraid to be radical in terms of thinking. They are afraid to push this truth beyond the confines of where America said that you are not allowed to think beyond. We said that, yes, we're going to push it. And that's the reason why... 
the things that are going on now, a lot of people said they sold out because they were afraid to make those same moves. Y'all all right? Yes. Getting a building was like astronomical to them. Oh, they must have sold out. Some people, some people said that, no, they really didn't get it because it's, it was, in their mind, unattainable. Why is it unattainable? A man could become a chemist to sell crack. They said we buy mansions in Oklahoma, um, Biggie outside. Really? Yeah, they said we took the money. Dang. They said we took the money. We living good out there, not knowing that each brother that's in that community right now sweat and bled and cried to get in that thing to make it happen. We made the sacrifices needed, came together. Some of us lived together. As, uh, as uncomfortable as it was, because you know how niggas is, we let go of that, and we became exactly what God meant us to be. We were the Israelites, and we came together, we built. That's why I said the most high God. Give the most high hand for that. So, so again, it is our own mind state that hinders us as a man thinketh. That's what the problem is. Once we, if, once, if, 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 once we have an imagination to do greatness, when you imagine something, that means you are looking at something that is beyond your immediate reach. Okay, it's like what they call a dream, okay? If you imagine greatness, like what we was talking about with the Greeks, when they put their images in our Bible. They knew that they weren't those people, but they put their, they imagined greatness well beyond their generation. Because they said, well, later on in our generations, our same sons and daughters, although they're reading the book of the Israelites, they're going to see themselves in it, and they're going to imagine themselves as us. What did that translate to? That translate that translated into, they could just go into our areas, buy up all kinds of properties, just like what you were saying. Buy up this, buy up that, and it's no mystery to them. They do it, and we're the ones that, we sit back and we say, oh, well, that's normal, because they're great people. They can do that. But when it comes to us, it's a phenomenon. It's impossible. How in the world did we do it? You see what I'm saying? We've settled for that because we did not have the imagination to imagine greatness within us. That's the power of imagery and the, uh, and, and the importance of faith and the importance of imagination and seeing yourselves beyond your reach. So when you, put, when, you have a, when, you have, when you project an image about yourselves, the whole objective of having an image or imagination is to aspire to set a goal for yourself and then to strive for it. The goal is the image of what you want to be. You would, we imagine, so you can understand, we imagine the school before we got it. We've had conversations about having a building, having a kitchen in it, having a music studio, all that. That's what's called. We have that in New York. You can, we, we imagine all of that stuff before it even came into being. You follow what I'm saying? And once we set that image up in our minds, then the next thing you know, we have to chase after what we imagined. You follow me? And we organized the whole body together. People gave arms and all that, and we had to make sure that what we said we were going to do, we did it. And that's the reason why the video was released, to show everybody on what we can do when we work together as a body. Okay, and that can, and if that can happen once, that can happen all over the planet Earth. Deacon, yeah. You know what's so heavy? The white man has imagined it and seen us doing it already before we did it. Anybody ever seen the movie X Man? Why you think they got that? They have, they got buildings and they got things set up and they got media attacking them and painting them on TV to be outcasts and being uh, people that's against the the uh, free world. It's okay, so to say. So that's let yeah mutants. So that's letting y'all know the white man believe and know that this is gonna happen, but we gotta get it in our minds to believe and know it's gonna happen. The purpose of this lesson is to learn that it is our precisely it is our own thinking that prevents the kingdom. The most I said the kingdom is yours. Yes. The 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 the, 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 the uh, Pharisees demanded when is the kingdom of God coming? He had to answer them and said, listen, you're looking for it to just drop out of the sky somewhere? No, it is within you. When you put it in your mind and do the righteousness that's required to get it, it will be yours. And that's what we have to do. It is our own thinking that holds us back. That's the reason for this class. And the reason why I'm saying these things is because the same, on a small scale, that's what it took 
to establish this particular chapter in IUIC. You follow me? The reality, the, the vision became reality. You're sitting in it. We started out in the bishops. We, right, yeah, yeah. We start, right, we start, so you can understand what I'm talking about. And this is the, this is the faith that I have. I, a lot of times, me and the deacons, we sit around, and some people will say, man, you know, I didn't think we was ever going to get this thing done. I don't listen to that. I said, man, I knew this the first day we started. Because it's not a surprise to me. I know that we are great people. You follow me? I get frustrated when I see that we don't do the things that I know we can do. We are the greatest people that ever put our foot, men and women. You are the greatest people. That, you, are the, you are God's greatest creation. That's right. All of you. You are God's greatest creation. Give me that. Give me your, uh, Jeremiah. I got to read this. Jeremiah uh, 221. I read this in cast today. Is it 221 that I want? Yeah. Let's see what they I want I want us to I'm gonna read this and it's 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 gonna speak in a negative sense, but understand what God said about us. The book of Jeremiah, chapter two, verse twenty-one. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine. Do you know what the Lord is saying? He says, Yet I have planted thee a noble vine. Vine is generations. I, I, God, have planted you a noble vine. A vine, a generation of nobility. That's what God made us. I have planted you a noble vine. All of you. A noble vine. But what happened? Read. Holy. A right seed. We were a holy people and a right seed. What is expected out of what we read in here? Greatness, absolute epitome of all things. For Jacob is the former of all things. When you read about, when you stop there, nothing but greatness is supposed to come from us. You follow me? Because God planted us that way. That's what the name Israel means. We are the princes of his power. We are the princes of God. The princes and the princesses of God. That's what Israel means. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Now listen to the shocker. Read. How then? Are thou how is it that after you've been planted noble, how then are you what? Turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me. How is it that out of all of this nobility we turn into a degenerate strange plant? You know what it is? A here you're the gardener. You plant what was it nice? Tulips? You plant tulips. You expect tulips to grow. You sit there as a gardener, then you look again and you got weeds. Not poison. <laughs> you got poison ivory. What the hell's going on here? I, I, I planted roses. I planted tulips. How the hell did I get weeds? And crabgrass. <laughs> How I get crabgrass? That would bug the gardener out. That's what the Lord is saying. Read it again. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the that degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? The question in that is how did it happen? How is it that we lost all that grace? You see what the man said? said? How did you turn from what I made you? It is because of our thinking. It is up to us to fix that. There's no other species that's going to fix our problems, brothers. Ain't no other species from outer space going to come and fix our problems. We have the mental fortitude to fix this through the Bible. You follow me? And our people are coming through these doors expecting that. They're coming through these doors, men and women. They're coming and, and they are expecting that. So we have to show them, yes, we do have the medicine in this Bible to fix your brain. Y'all all right? We got to make it plain upon them. The new brothers that's in the back, that's what they need to see. You brothers that's in the camps that's teaching, people have to see that. This is very basic what I'm talking about. But this basic is what's going to fix our people. We don't need to go into no deep breakdowns of this and that and the other. Fix our people's brains on a basic level. Y'all all right? Uh, read that Jeremiah again. I'm going back to Kings. I didn't finish with that. I'm going back to Kings. Yes, I'm not done. Read that Jeremiah again. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 21. No, no, no. 15 and 11. 15 and 11. The 
book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 11. Go ahead. The Lord said, Verily it shall be well with thy remnant. <laughs> the Lord said, Verily it shall be well with the remnant of Israel that is willing to keep his commandments and do the things that are required and teach my people. Go ahead. Verily I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil. In the time of evil, he's going to cause our enemies to treat us well, meaning leave us alone. Now, they're going to try to attack us. Like when you read in Revelation like uh, 12, 17, then uh, they attacked, they came, the, there was a great flood. So, you know, we get opposition on that level. But the point that the Most High said, they should not prevail. That's what we're reading here. They're not going to be able to stop this. Although they're going to be angry and attack, they're not going to prevail. This kingdom will be established. This kingdom will be established. Read. And in the time of affliction. And in the time of affliction, he's going to make sure that we get this job done. That's what he's saying. That's the favor that he's going to grant to us. So they're not going to stop this. And the mere fact, the, the main fact that we know that God is the one that's in control of everything, we have that confidence that he's going to back us up. Why are we afraid? Why would we even think that we're going to lose the kingdom? Because of him? No. No. That's when you know who your maker is. The ox knows its owner. The ass knows. We know where our homeland is and we know where our power is. We know that God is our power. We know that God is our strength. And once we know that, we fear nothing. Okay? That's the attitude that we have to have when our new brothers and our new sisters come in. Don't be afraid to challenge the, 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 uh, the, the negative imagery that they put towards us. To cause us to think that we can't do anything. Let's go back to Kings. Let's finish it up in Kings. The book of 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 50. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee. And in all their transgressions. Wherein they have transgressed against thee. And give them. So all of what we call our father to help us uh, endeavor. He's going to grant us to that. He's going to grant that on us. If we do what is required. And this is what our prayer is. This is really why prayer is important. Everybody's with me. Yes, Alright, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Give me the book of Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. All of this, like I said, this lesson is to, is to learn. Of, uh, uh, in this lesson, we will learn that it is our own thinking which prevents us from bringing forth the elements and building the kingdom. And once we get that thinking straight, the kingdom is going to be here. Y'all understand that? Read. Would you like Romans 13 and 1. Look of Romans chapter 13 verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. The powers that be on this earth are ordained of God. So who should we fear? Should we fear man or should we fear God? Yeah. That's the point. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. So what the Lord is telling you is that everybody have their particular role in this earth, including the nations. So the Most High gave, the, gave our enemies a particular role to play. Read. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Go ahead. They that resist the order, go ahead, shall receive to themselves damnation. Listen now. Go ahead. <laughs> For rulers are not a terror unto good works. This is what we just read out of Jeremiah earlier. For the rulers are not a terror to good works. What verse are we in? Verse 3, sir. Okay. For the rulers are not a terror to good works. What are the good works that it's talking about? God's laws. Okay. There's a, in God's laws, when we apply God's laws, you don't have to worry about the opposition on the outside. The Most High is telling you flat out that the rulers are not a terror unto you that keep God's laws. Okay? And whenever they do come against you, because we do face persecution, they're in trouble with the Most High. And the Most High will defeat them. Go ahead. The rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. But the, but the rulers are a terror to them that do evil. Meaning that if you're breaking God's laws, he's going to cause this same ruler to come down on them. That's the reason why a lot of us get, get locked up. Why? Because we don't want to pay child support for our own children. We 
When we was in our when we was in our own land, we had judges that made sure that you took care of what you had to take care of. But but because we didn't honor that, the most I said, okay. But since when you had your own rulership, you didn't keep the laws. Now we put an enemy over you that's gonna make you take care of your family. You all right? Yes, sir. Read. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Will thou then not be? read the whole verse again? For rulers are not a terror unto good works, but to the evil. But the rulers are a terror to the evil, the brothers that do evil, the sisters that do evil. Go ahead. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Won't you then not be afraid of the power? Because you wasn't afraid of the power when you had your own. Now put this beast over you, you're going to be afraid now. But who are, we, who are you really afraid of? The Most High. The Most High says, simply, I'm going to use your enemy to enforce my law now. Since you didn't, didn't listen to it, we got your own. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Do that which is good. Do that which is good. And thou shalt have praise of the same. And thou shalt have praise of the same. So, what is the objective? Whenever people come across us as Israel, they're not supposed to see those same bad, evil examples. Okay? So by us doing the things that we know that should do, like pick up the garbage, keep your areas clean, keep the nobility among yourselves. When people come in and they see the structure and the order and the love that you have for one another and the discipline and the neighborly and the, and the, and the respect that, you, that we all have and the order and the respect that goes throughout the whole congregation, when they see that, they can't speak no evil against you. And that in, that in itself restores the image. You follow me? So then, there, then it becomes a distinction. Ah, oh, the Israelites are this, the Israelites are that. Then the question comes, well, who are you talking about? Because that ain't that group in the purple and the gold. You follow me? Yes, Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We have to change how people think. We have to change our own thinking. Read. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. For, for he is the minister of God to be for good. In other words, you're going to do good now because you didn't do good before. Give me uh, Romans, I'm, I'm sorry, Psalms 17 and 13. Psalms chapter 17, verse 13. I'm almost done. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 17, verse 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Deliver, the, deliver thy soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the most I'm saying that, go back to uh, Romans. This is what he's saying. Let's go back to Romans 13 and 4. This is what it means. Romans chapter 13. This is the sword of the most High that we read about. For he is the minister of God. He is the minister of God to thee for good. But for he, meaning this, these, the powers that be, is the minister of God to thee for your good. Go ahead. But if thou do that which is evil. But if you do that which is evil. Go ahead. Be afraid. Be afraid. Why? For he bears not the sword in vain. For he bears not the sword in vain. The most I was sick of my... That's the reason why we went into captivity. When we broke God's laws, he sent these same enemies to us to put us in captivity. Because we broke God's laws. So when we do what's right in God's laws, what do the enemies have to... What choice do they have to do then? They have to leave us alone. You follow me? The most high is the one that moves on the spirit of men to do the things that they do. He's the one that rules in the kingdoms of men. The father. So once we have this understanding, then there is no stopping us. Once we get our minds set in the right order of what the Most High is saying. Okay? Uh, read on. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Go ahead. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. This is what this is what we have to have to realize. We are to do good not only because of what we might fear from the nations, but because it's good conscience. So who are we really fearing? The most high. Read. For for this cause pay tribute you pay tribute also for they are God's ministers attending Continually upon 
this very thing. Go ahead. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom, custom, custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Now somebody might be reading this and say, why is the Lord telling us to act, uh, act righteously with the people that are ruling over us? Correct? Y'all all right? <laughs> that might be a question, right? Some people might think that we should, after reading this, oh, man, I'm not doing right when I go to the, I'm going to steal, I'm going to do this, rob them that rob me. You go, you go, go misunderstand that scripture, go out there and get locked up. So, <laughs> read this again. I'm going to show you what this is talking about. I'm going to show you the reason why the Lord said this. He and that, again, he's not telling us to serve them. There's a reason for why you're doing this, and the answer is in verse 5. We just read it. Wherefore, ye must uh, needs be subject, not only for wrath sake, but for conscience sake, meaning that you're doing this because God requires it. it has nothing to really do with the nations. We have, to, we have the understanding of knowing why the Lord told us to obey the powers that be. And I'm going to read a scripture that's going to confirm this. What was the last verse that we just read? Verse 7, sir. Read verse 7 again. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Uh, Luke chapter 16, verse 10, verse 11, and verse 12. Read. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. This correlates with what we just read in Romans. Come on. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Here's the example. Where is Officer Seth at? The little thing of him picking up that cup in the back translates into what we're reading. Because that little cup just represents a little cup. Read it again. He that is faithful in which is least. He that is faithful in that which is least. Something, very, uh, something that most of us in our wrong thinking would just leave it there. Ah, oh, hell, it's just a cup. So what, it's just a, a white cup on the green grass. It ain't an eyesore to me because I'm only going to see it as long as I'm there. But when I leave, out of sight is out of mind. That's how some of us are trained to think. You follow me? Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Read, read it again. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Go ahead. And, and he that is unjust in least. And he that is unjust in the least he you stealing on your job. The scriptures say, thou shalt not steal. He that is unfaithful, he that is uh, unjust in the least, that is unjust also in much. Will also be unjust in much. So the thing that you do here, that's, that habit is going to go with you no matter where you go. You follow me? If you didn't keep your regular project clean and now you got a mansion, you just going to have a big mess in your mansion. Read. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the righteous unrighteousness, if you have there, what verse is this? This is eleven. Verse eleven. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous manner, manner, meaning if you're gonna live like a knucker in this society, you all right? Go ahead. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? Who will give you? The power to rule your own kingdom if you can't even do it right in this kingdom here. Read. And if you have not been faithful, this this verse will clear up clearly. Read. If ye, and if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? This means this right here is saying that if you can't operate righteously now, how in the world am I going to put you as rulers of the planet Earth? And you can't even control a little thing like this. You can't even take care of your own building. You can't even take care of your own selves. The smallest thing. The smallest thing. He said, yeah, I'm going to put you over the whole planet Earth? Do you want to take the kingdom? So you see what I'm saying? The Most High said, no. We have to do it right here. And then you will be fit to govern your own thing. Y'all see that? Yes, it's as simple as that, right? So all those negative foolishness that you see out here on YouTube and all of that, can you imagine that ruling the planet Earth? All the evil that they be speaking against people? Man, no. The most I said, no, I'm going to cut all that garbage off. We ain't going to see that no more. After this kingdom, we ain't going to see that mess no more. That's what the wilderness is going to do. He will cause us to pass under the rod. You better get it right then. Okay? 
So in our building, the elements that we need, I'm going to talk about two things left. Architectural order and the construction of organization. I'm going to go through this uh, kind of quick. Uh, setting things in order. Give me the book of Titus uh, chapter 1 verse 5. The objective of, of, of fostering the proper thinking. The, the objective and the mission of, of, um, of fostering um, the elements and building the kingdom goes into setting up order. Titus chapter 1 verse 5. But the Titus chapter 1 verse 5. For this cause I left thee in Crete that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. So, this is what's going on with us. Read it again. For this cause I left thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order. So, us as leaders, the leading men, our job is to set the nation of Israel in order. What things are we to set in order? What's the next piece? The things that are wanting. The things that are lacking. So, if we, in order for you to set up order, you have to look at what we need, where is it that we're trying to go, and then you have to create those things. Like I said before, when we started out in the bishop's apartment, we didn't have schools. We didn't have a, video, a, a, a real video department, a music studio. We did not have a food, uh, food business. We didn't have clothing. A lot of the, the real estate, a lot of, and there's a whole lot of other stuff. I had a list of the things that, that we are uh, involved in. But none of these things existed then. Read it again. For this cause, I left thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. The things that are wanting, meaning the things that are lacking. Okay? So as we move from step one to step two, all of a sudden, we realized that there was other things that were lacking. Now we need to educate our children because it's, if, if it's just a group of us, we have wives, we have children. Children need to be educated. Women need to learn certain things so that they can properly take care of themselves. You follow me? The, the, the need for the body continues to grow. And as, the, and as the need of the body continues to grow, we have to put things in place to cover those areas. Okay? You follow me? The things that are lacking. So we had to come up with, uh, if we wanted to do um, videos on on YouTube or whatever, or or any other video, we had to have people that know how to edit. If we're going to have a building, we need people that know how to deal with construction, electricity, carpentry. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We have to set things in order to make sure that these things get done. When we're sitting in the in the in the uh, basement of the bishop. There was no such thing as this. So as we move from step one to step two, what ended up happening? Other things just came into being that we need to cover. As you move from step one to step two to step three, the need for uh, organization in departments and different things that's going to pop up simply because you move from point A to point B, we're going to set order to those things so that we can continue to grow. You follow me? That's where that term exponential growth comes from. If y'all ever heard us use that term before. Whenever, whenever you go from one point to the next point, every point you go is going to have its own set of needs that's going to come with it. Now we got to come to the point where we got to set up a school to educate our children. You follow me? Have a music studio to record to put out righteous music for our brothers and sisters so they can have the confidence to believe in themselves and not have to always listen to this garbage that's out here in the street. Did you follow me? Set up, an, uh, set up, uh, uh, now we got movie production, brothers in the actual movies. Movies are actually being produced to go inside theaters. You follow me? Yes. That's going on. Y'all all right? Yes, These things, and the reason why this is important is because for our people to see this, you know, people will be like, wow, we actually can look at ourselves, see our image of ourselves, and if my fathers can do it, and my older brothers can do it, I can do it. You follow me? That's what Titus 1 and 5 is about. Ezekiel 37 and 10. Did you want to finish it? Or? Did we, did, was, that, was that it? No, sir. Okay, the fifth verse. Read. And ordain elders in every city. Oh, uh, see that. I'm not reading it, so I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up. Fred, read the whole verse again. Yes, sir. For this cause I left thee in Crete, that thou shouldst set us in order things that are lacking. Set 
to set things that are lacking, set up in order. So our job is, you, you brothers as officers, set the people in order. Set the people that come in, because they don't know. They don't know. It's our job to set them in order. You follow me? There's, the, the, the nation of the scripture say, for the harvest, for the, uh, for, the, for the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. It is our job to organize the laborers to get these things done. Okay, that's what that scripture that we just read. To set in order the things that are lacking. Read. And ordain elders in every city. And to, uh, and, and to ordain elders in every city. Elders is talking about you brothers. Okay. I know you got elders like the bishop and all that, but I'm talking about us as being leaders. Elders in this, in this sense is talking about leaders. You are a leader over the people that come in here. You're officers. That's the reason why you have the rank. Y'all all right? So our job is to organize these men. Okay? Is that it? That is it? No, sir. Go ahead. As I had appointed thee. As I have appointed you. I set you up to set the order. Your job is to go through these churches, that's what he told them, and to set these churches in order. And all of the things in each church that is lacking, you put men over that to set those things up in order. That's what his job was. Y'all all right? That's what your job is. So our job, we are not the sick. We got work to do. For behold, the kingdom of God is within us. Okay? Ezekiel chapter 37. I'm almost done. Verse 10. Uh, yes. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And, I, and the breath came into them. And they lived. And stood upon their feet. An exceeding great army. An, ex an exceeding great army. An army is a structured organization. Within the army you have captains, you have officers, you have generals. You follow what I'm saying, right? Yes, and all of these men have responsibilities. But the overall objective of the, the overall mission of an army is to fortify and sustain the nation. Y'all all right? We all have our respective roles within it, but this army is talking about ordered men, structured, set things in order. Uh, Timothy's two, Second Timothy's two, three to five. Second Timothy's two, three to five. The book of Second Timothy, chapter two, verse three. Thou therefore endure hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. This goes into discipline. If we understand the if we understand the importance of discipline and that discipline is about us resisting impulsive uh, temptations to go back into the world and become nothing. You follow me? That's easy to do. It's comfortable to think within the box. It's difficult to challenge the the mold that, that we were made to sit in. You follow me? Impulses to play games in the club while they're trying to study. All about their friends, hey man, let's go do this, let's go do that. They said, no, I'm focused on this. That's discipline. You follow me? That's, that's the resistance to give in to impulse. That puts the brakes on impulse. Why? Because you're disciplined, because you know where you're going and you know the reason why you're doing it. Why is it that I'm not running with you? Why is it that I'm not fooling around with this? Because I have a job to do. And I'm doing it because I'm expecting a particular result. What are we expecting? The king. So we don't have time to play with foolishness. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Where we at? Verse 4. Read. No man that warreth entangling himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. So we have to realize that we're at war. No man that warreth. So we are at war. What are we at war with? With the evil impulses that keeps our people in sin. We have to be against that and know the reason why and know the benefit of, of adhering to discipline. We understand the reason why discipline is important and we understand that we need it in order to get through all of this so that we can get what we've imagined, the kingdom. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Read. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet... Is he not crowned except he strive lawfully? So ranks will be given to those men and notoriety will be given to those men that do the, that achieve 
and go up the ladder in the right sense. When you do right, then the Most High will increase you. You may be an officer of 10 today, you become an officer of 50 next next year. You follow me? Or officer of 20, or whatever the right, whatever, however the levels move. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, because you would have strived lawfully. As you fulfill your office, you would be moved to the next level. That's what the Lord is going to do. Y'all all right? Why is it important that you move to the next level? Because if you're doing your job right, more people are going to fill in where you just left off. And as more come in, the kingdom gets gotcha. built even more and more. Gotcha. Y'all understand that? Because what are we looking for? To get that 144,000 person along with the one third. Once that person is sealed up, we're out of here. The kingdom is ours. Y'all all right? So there's a reason for why we do what we do. And if we know the reason and we know what's required to get in it, why won't we do it? Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Read. That was it? Yes, sir. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 17. Hebrews 13 and 17. This is still dealing with order. Obey them that have rule over you. Obey them that have the rule over you. So this is where it talks about bishops, deacons, captains, officers, soldiers, on down the line. Y'all follow me? Go ahead. And submit yourselves, for they watch for your soul. That's the, that's the responsibility that the leaders over you have. They watch for your soul. This is going back to what I was talking about earlier, the watchmen. If the watchmen don't deal with the people right, the watchmen will get jacked up. Because if, if we, in the leadership position, don't deal with you right, you're going to get led astray, but we're going to be held accountable for it. You follow me? So if, that's, if that is understood, follow what we say, because we have your best interest at heart. Y'all all right? Because we're trying to get the kingdom, and the way we're going to get the kingdom is when we instruct you the correct way. Read. For they watch for your souls as they must give an account. As they must give account. We have to give account on your behalf. That's the reason why we come to the captains. How's this brother doing? How's this officer doing? This is what we have reports that we that we deal and we ask. So and so is in trouble, such and such. This is going on. Let me see the records. And how come this situation wasn't resolved? Oh, because I didn't feel like it. No, you didn't, you didn't do your job. Your, your job was to fix these brothers whenever they got into trouble. Build these brothers up. You follow me? Okay, the family's going through a particular crisis. Get involved in that thing. Fix that. So we watch for your souls. Go ahead. As they must give an account. Because we must give account. Because we were put in charge over that. Just like there's people over me. There's people over you. And you over people. I'm talking about your cat brothers. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. That they may do it with joy. That we may give God. We may give a good report. That's the joy. And Go, go ahead. And not with grief. We don't want to give a bad report. Brother didn't adhere to the scriptures. He didn't adhere to the laws. Now we got to give a bad report. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Everybody's with me? Yes, sir. Okay, so that covers the, uh, on how important it is, and we understand the benefit of order, and the benefit of organization. Everybody's with me? Yes, sir. Last one, I'm going to just talk about discipline real quick. Give me, I'm going to read one scripture and I'm going to leave it at that. I had a few, but I'm going to end it with this. Did you want me to finish 17, sir? Uh, yeah, where were we at? Um, the very last thing. Okay, I'm sorry. For that, it is unprofitable for you. Right, it is unprofitable for you if we have to give a bad report on you. Y'all all right? That's not going to work good for you. Now, uh, Sirach chapter 4, we'll talk about discipline now. Sirach chapter 4, verse 17 to 25. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 4, verse 17. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways. For Now, this is the importance of discipline and wisdom. For at first, when you first come in, your brothers, your sisters, when y'all come in, y'all brand new to the faith. And we, as the watchmen, we're watching over you. Y'all all right? Read, read them again. For at first, she will walk with him by crooked ways. For at first... She, the wisdom and discipline, will walk 
the wisdom will walk with you by crooked ways. What is the crooked ways it's talking about? What does it mean when it's like crooked ways? For at first its wisdom will walk by you with crooked ways. I want the young brothers in the back. What does that mean? For at first the wisdom will walk by you in crooked ways. What's it talking about? Brother Eli. Brother Eli. It's talking about like the um the ideas that you came in with of the world, you know, the things that you used to do. The things that you used to do. For at first let me get the scripture. Four and seventeen. Hold on a second. Uh, okay, I got it. For at first for at the first she, meaning wisdom, will walk with him by crooked ways. So I'm asking about the crooked ways, right? What is the crooked ways? Sin. Sin? Huh? Your sins? Hmm? Your sins. Your sins, yes. Uh, go ahead, read. Oh, you need a mic? Okay. Yes, so the crooked ways would be your sins, correct? Yes, sir. So your, this wisdom will walk by you. During your sins. For a time. For a time. Okay. Go ahead, read. And bring fear and dread upon him. And this and the same wisdom will bring fear and dread upon you while you're walking in your crooked ways, while you're walking in your sins. The fear and dread meaning the judgments of God's laws. Everybody's with me? Yes, sir. Read. And torment him with her discipline. And will do what? And torment her him. With her discipline. And the same wisdom will torment you while you're in your sins with what? Discipline. With the discipline. Because what's happening here is that you're being made to resist the uh, sin. And while you're resisting the sin, it's a torment to you because you've been loving it for so long. That impulse for you to commit that sin has been bred into you and you've been loving it. Now comes the law. Now comes the discipline of the law. Now you're tormented because now you're fighting. You all right? Yes, sir. Read. Until she may trust his soul. Until she may trust his soul. What's happening there? Because the discipline would have taught you the benefits of the discipline. That's when the discipline and the wisdom trust you. Okay? Everybody's with me. Yes, sir. You're able to understand the benefits of the discipline. That's when wisdom said, okay, you know what, I can ride with this person because he understands the reason for the discipline. He's not upset with the discipline. He's not despising the chastisement. He understands the, dis he understands the chastisement. He understands that I had to beat him up to make him leave that evil. And he understands the benefit of me disciplining him. That's what wisdom is doing. Everybody's with me? Three. And try him by her law and try him trials that's what the word try me you will go through trials by her laws now the laws come out brother got a problem with this brother brother got a trial problem with that trials come out on him now or her and that's to purify him or her from those crooked ways and if they endure that then wisdom will walk by them everybody's with me yes, sir. read then Will she return the straight way unto him? Then she will return, not the crooked ways, the but the straight way. Now you got the laws. Now you now you can let that light shine that other people can see your good works. Y'all all right? Yes, then we can be that city that sits upon the hill for our brothers and sisters that are still out there walking in crooked ways. They can actually see the benefit of the laws. They can see the benefit of the discipline and have hope when they see you. Go ahead. And comfort him and show him her secrets. And, and this wisdom and the discipline will comfort you and it will show you her secrets. The secrets meaning now you know how to do the good things that like we were talking about earlier, wise to do evil, but to do good, to have no knowledge. The wisdom will begin to show you the good things that you couldn't come up with earlier. Now you can now you can show, in fact. He comes, be able to do the things that a lot of people figured out was impossible because the wisdom would have shown that to you. Y'all all right? Y'all follow me? Remember we read the scripture earlier? They are wise to do evil but to have, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Now you do have the knowledge to do good. Why? Because the wisdom would have taught you how to use it. 
You all all right? Yes, sir. Read. Read to 25. But if he go wrong, but if he was, if he refused to be disciplined, if he hates the chastisement of the Lord, go ahead. She will forsake him. She will, for, she will forsake him and leave him to his own ruin. That's why you see people go back out in the world and become nothing. Because they did not uh, they did not welcome the discipline. Give me one more scripture. Yes, sir. You know, we're not supposed to be proud when we mess up. Ex except the wrong that we have done. Because what it will do, it will teach us what to do the next time. Come back and rebuild again. Y'all all right? Yes, one more scripture and I'm done. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 5. The book of Hebrews. Chapter 12, verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as to unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. We are not supposed to despise the chastening of the Lord. Okay, this is that discipline tormenting us to get ourselves right. Everybody's with me? We're being corrected from the crooked ways that we walked in. Saying the same thing that we read earlier. Everybody's with me? This is what we have to, as teachers, we have to make sure that our younger brothers understand this. And our families, our wives, and our children. We have to make sure that we all understand this. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. Read. Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. But don't faint when thou art rebuked of, of the discipline and the chastisement that the Lord gives us when we do wrong. Go ahead. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Why? Because he wants you to learn what you need to learn. Your parents gave you a spanking when you messed up. And when you first got it, you didn't understand that. But you see the benefits of that chastisement as you got older. Because you was doing wrong, and if they did not chastise you, you would end up destroying yourselves. You follow me? So as we got older, the lesson, we understood the purpose of the chastisement. So never despise that thing. Read. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. And he scourges every son that he receiveth. So that's the reason why the, the discipline will torment us. The wisdom will torment us because he wants us to learn to get away from the crooked ways. So that he can return the straight paths unto us. Everybody's with me? Yes, sir. Read on. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. If you endure chastening, then God deals with us as sons. Go ahead. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? What verse are you in? Verse 7, sir. Okay, go ahead. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. You don't want to be called a bastard, do you? So parents do chastise their children, don't they? God is our father, and when we do wrong, God chastises us, dummy. Yes, That's the whole reason for Deuteronomy 28. That's the whole reason for this whole messed up thing now. But once, you, once you've gotten punished by your parents, then you come to a point where you say, well, Dad, Mom, why did you beat me? Why did you put me on punishment? Once you get the understanding of why you was on punishment, and you understand the reason for it, then we can bring you back out to play. You follow me? Because you, you would have learned your lesson. You follow me? Yes, That's what this punishment is for. So why are you going to despise that? That's what the Lord is saying. Read that again. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye back? You then ye. Sorry. Then are, are ye bastards. bastards and not sons? Then you're not the children of the Most High. But that's not us. We are the children of the Most High, and our Father chastised us to get us right, just like a father and a mother would chastise their own children because they love them. Go ahead. Furthermore, we have a father of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave him reverence. We gave our fathers and mothers, uh, when they beat us, we reverenced them because we understood the reason for those punishments. Y'all all right? Yes, sir, sir. Go ahead. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirit? Meaning the most high. We're supposed to be more understanding of why the Lord punished us. Everybody's with me? Yes, sir. Read. And live... Go ahead. For they verily for a few days chastised us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. In other words, we've learned our lesson and because we've learned our lessons, 
come back out and get the privileges that I had to once take away from you because of your disobedience. Everybody's all right? Yes, sir. Go ahead, read. Now, no chastity for the present seemeth to be joyous. Nobody, but while you're in your trials, that ain't no fun time. You all right? When you're going through your afflictions and your trials, that's not easy. That's not fun. But if you understand the reason for your trial, it, it, it makes it easier to understand. When you go through your trial, like I say when I teach in New York, to go in your trial, you go down into your trial with an up attitude. You're able to endure it because you know the reason why you're going through it. You understand? Yes, sir. If you got, if you was put in jail for doing a crime, you know you're supposed to get that. You follow me? But what is it like to go to jail for something that you didn't do? That's when you go into a trial not understanding it. But if you go through a trial, you understand that the reason why the Lord is doing it because he's trying to show you something. That causes a different mind state while you're in your, while you're in your trial. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Read. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Mm -hmm. After you've learned your lesson, that's the peaceable fruit of righteousness. After you've learned what the trial is about. After you've learned what the, what the chastisement was about, go ahead. Unto them which are exercised thereby, it, will, it says, uh, afterward yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. That's what the punishment did. It exercised good fruit from us because now we understand the purpose of it. Everybody's with me? Yes, sir. Read. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down. Yeah, you just got beat. And it says, lift up your hands. Why? Because you understand the reason for the discipline. You understand the reason for the trials. You understand the reason for the temptation. You understand the reason for the chastisement. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Read. And the feeble knees. Lift up your hands because you understand it. Go ahead. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men. And holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Well, if you don't follow peace with all men in terms of dealing right and understanding the reason for the chastisement, you shall not see the Lord. Go ahead. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. This verse right here is important because this is talking about a person who's being chastised and he's mad. He's angry that he's getting chastised. This is a person that went into their trials, that, went, that when, when the discipline came on, they didn't understand the discipline, they didn't understand the chastisement, they didn't understand the trial, but got mad and hated it and despised the chastisement. Then a root of bitterness came up in them. Now they're mad, like Cain was. Go ahead. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright? So basically, you see what the most high did? He put Esau in there to show you that when you have this negative spirit, you ain't no better than him. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. If you are a profane person and a fornicator, why are you crying? Why are you mad? Go ahead. For ye know that how afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. He was rejected because a root of bitterness was in him. The Most High rubbed, rubbed him out. Go ahead. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. This is what's going to happen to us if we don't understand the chastisement of the Lord. That's the reason why the Most High used Esau for an example. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. So we have to understand the reason for the trials. We have to understand the reason for the temptation, the chastisement, the rebuke. We have to understand the reasons for those things. They are designed to put the right kind of thinking in us. And we will gain this right kind of thinking once we understand what we've been through and why we went through it. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Uh, is that it? Yeah. Now, one more scripture, then I'm done. <laughs> First Peter chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. Then that's it. That's it. First Peter chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. First Peter that's chapter. the end of it. I hope y'all got something from this lesson. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. For this is thankworthy. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience towards God endureth grief, suffering wrongfully. Go ahead. For what glory is it 
if when ye be buffeted for your faults, that ye shall take it patiently. That's a question. For what glory is it if ye be buffeted for your faults? If you did wrong and you're getting buff buffed for it, why should you seek glory? Here you done did crimes and now you get punished for it and you want to be glorified in that. No, you're supposed to get jacked up for it. Go ahead. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, take it patiently. But if you suffer, what does it say? But when ye do well, but when you do well, here you kept the commandments, here you kept the laws. A lot of people ask this question. A lot of people say, how do you know if God's chastisement is a result of sin or is it a result of God wanting to open your eyes or something? A lot of people ask that question. Like we read about examining yourself. You examine yourself. This is how you do it. You examine yourself. You take the laws in the Bible and you put them against your own actions. And if you check, and if your checklist comes clean, I have not done wrong to my sister. I have not done wrong to my brother. I have not stolen. I haven't. You go down a whole list. And you find that you have violated no laws, but you're still going through a trial, that means that, that that reason that you're going through the trial is not because you've done something wicked. It is because the Lord wants to bring your understanding up on another level. Y'all understand the difference? Yes, sir. Now follow me. Now, if you go down a checklist and you find that you violated, you know, I mistreated my brother, I didn't do this right, I did, then you know that that's punishment for wickedness. You ain't supposed to, that's the, that's the top part of uh, what we read. What verse was that? Uh, verse the, the top of 20. Verse 20. Right? right. For what glory is in it when ye be buffeted for your fault. If you are in the wrong and you're getting buffeted for that, that's normal. You're supposed to get that. Then you know that that trial or the right thing that's going on is because of your own wickedness. Right. That, ain't, you ain't, that ain't nothing to glory about. That's to be expected. Read. Ye be well and suffer for it. But if you do well and you're going through a trial and you're being tried on this and you're being tried for that. Go ahead. Ye take it patiently. You take that as well. You take that patiently. This is acceptable with this God. This is acceptable before God. Why? Because God is not doing this to you because you did wrong. He's doing it to you because he wants to elevate you on another level. So although we are striving, like the scriptures say, through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven, the Most High is going to try us as we do that. But if we're not in sin, the trials that we're going through is going to only make us better to run this planet Earth. Y'all understand? It's going to put us in the right mind frame to properly judge this Earth in righteousness. Y'all okay? Yes, sir. So these are the things that are required in getting the kingdom of heaven. I just put, put this together for us. Because I wanted to correlate that with the beginning of how the school was acquired. Okay? A little thing like what was done to open these doors of the school, there was no, there was no uh, limit to how far this can go. Okay? A school that began, a uh, congregation that began in the, in the living room of the bishop turned into how many schools now? Over 30. Over 30, Over 30 schools. All across the world. Okay? We got the watch and read for the kids. And like I said, there's a whole lot of things that we got going on as a result of constantly taking this truth to the next level. Because we think like men and we think like women. You follow me? Yes, sir. As a man thinketh. If you think to be in greatness and apply God's laws and his commandments, there's nothing that's stopping us. There's nothing that's stopping us. The day of the Gigi is gone. That's the reason why I say that. Okay, those days are gone. Once we find out what this Bible is really about and apply it, the world is ours. The world is ours. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. 
So again, please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.